Hello everyone, it's your host, Seth the Programmer, and with me today I have my good old pal, Swag Kage, and we are going to be talking about Naruto versus Shippuden, Naruto and Sasuke, you know, their dynamic duo versus the entire series. This video will be mainly made because, you know when you go around you hear stuff like, could Hashirama and Madara and their primes have fought Kaguya with like the wood style just bind her up and seal her away or something like that or you know maybe you have eight gates guy was could like punch out Kaguya or something like people don't generally understand the power cliff Naruto and Sasuke versus all the non six paths characters so no DMS Kakashi Kaguya or Madara we could actually give them ten tails Obito yeah probably so he'd he'd be like the general right like he'd he'd be like the core of their whole strategy and he'd just he, he still gets farted on yeah like really bad even if you just assume that it's like teenage Naruto and Sasuke they get a lot stronger uh, after Hagoromo powers them up yeah Jubito's really strong if you remember before Naruto even got his like golden cloak he was just taking Madara to town and this was because Madara wasn't like, he didn't have the full power of the Jubi, he hadn't absorbed the world tree. And, um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure we can all agree that Madara was more powerful than Obito in base. And Naruto was still just, you know, handling this guy. And this was before he was even at full power, he was still just getting used to these new six paths abilities. You throw Sasuke in on his team too, like what's Obito supposed to do? One of the big things that people go for, 8 gates guy. So I, I was about to say the same thing, like, you know, like, and we'll just assume that he has infinite 8 gates too. I don't want to hurt like my guys because he's like one of the best characters in the show. Like he's what Rock Lee probably should have been <laughs> near the end of the show. But in this case, he does get wanked a lot as an EOS tier character when he's really not. If you watch the Madara fight, 8 Gates guy needed help numerous times or else he would have been killed. And this is Madara with one Renegon and no God Tree Amp, okay? This same Madara is reacting to Guy all the time. Now, it is implied Guy can kill Madara, like if he like just sat there and Guy just kept beating him down, which Guy didn't have the stamina or body to handle doing that, really. Even then, Guy starts launching himself at Madara, and Madara's like, okay, he's coming at me linearly, here's some truth-seeking orbs, or here's like a truth-seeking shield to block your kick, and you'll just like dissolve as you kick me. And then, you know, Kakashi's using Kamui to remove the shield from the equation, or they're using Flying Raijin to like teleport between them. So Madara, no matter what, was really destined to win that. And at the very end of the battle, Might Guy does his Night Guy, like his full power. And it's to the point where like it starts warping Modern Mars like, whoa, you know, like he can't really stand straight. Yeah. And then Guy kicks him full force. And then Madara just regenerates and he's like, haha, well, I guess I'll just kill you now. And he throws a ball at Guy's body, which is literally charred and burning away. So even this attack that Madara can kind of almost handle, when it comes down to it, that one kick just kills guy like he's done after that kick but the other thing is as well we don't even know if he's fast enough to even hit naruto because it's actually implied that naruto's six paths rasen shuriken is on par with that same attack like it literally messes up madara if not even more than Mike guy's kick did because madara can't even like speak after that like he's like dumbfounded at what happened and then he absorbs the god tree and gets an amp and then he gets another Renegon later, gets way more powerful as well as the God Tree Amp, which is implied to be a Bijou Cloak level increase of power. Like all of the Bijou added on to Naruto at that point, because Naruto is using his base six path state. And then Naruto's Shadow Clones are fighting Madara. So it's like, in what world is Eight Gates guy actually scaling to Naruto or any of these characters? Like, would Eight? Well, how does he even like hit them? <laughs> right? and, and, yeah, <laughs> like. Like, you gotta assume that Naruto and Sasuke are both willing to just stand there. Which, like, yeah, Madara, you know, the, the big, like, show-offy Chad that he is, sure. He'll pull, like, a perfect cell and let Guy charge up his ultimate move. Naruto, and especially Sasuke, are not about to let that happen. The second Kaguya was powering up, maybe you can bring that one up, like, when she was appearing. Like, Sasuke instantly teleported over to Kaguya, and Naruto sprinted over there to, like, murder her before she could, like, power up and appear. Another thing as well is that Sasuke could just teleport out of the way of Might Guy, but you would have to prove that they're even this powerful. I think the funniest thing is that Sasuke could just switch places exactly. with one of the other people on the other team, and then they would take the full force of Guy's kick, yeah. which, uh, yeah, that'd be pretty unfortunate because I can't imagine anyone, Obito included, who'd be able to withstand that. 
if you watch Naruto, he fights Kaguya, and Kaguya's vacuum fist is so powerful that it like rips apart Sasuke Susano, which is probably more durable than he is. And then Naruto is able to compete with her like fist to fist with his like truth seeking orbs, as well as the fact that he's able to use Boyo Release to overpower her blatantly. There's no way or feat that Eight Gates guy actually scales to Kaguya or any of these other characters. The only thing that people bring up is like, oh, well, uh, he, he he's warping the space. And it's like, well, that doesn't necessarily mean he's insanely faster because we know that some characters are actually getting blitzed in the six paths here and they can't even say anything when a character's coming at them, let alone say like Madara having a full dialogue when he has like a full bijou level decrease compared to his like later form. So it's also implied that Boyle released Naruto as like the strongest taijutsu in the series when he does it or something like that. So it's kind of insane and then like again obito included guy is like the strongest person on their team and, and even if you assume that he has like infinite eight gates which he doesn't like naruto and sasuke would be able to take care of him easily because his durability is significantly lowered uh he starts to injure himself as soon as he starts using it like his bones are breaking and stuff you know, it, it wouldn't take much for Naruto or Sasuke to just wipe him out. He'd be dead as soon as they identified him as the most threatening member of the enemy team. Then, like, they, they take out Obito the same way, and, like, it, it'd just be down to taking out all of these much weaker characters, right? It'd be like if there were two Maduras when he fought the Shinobi Alliance. Like Seth pointed out earlier, like, Naruto just cuts Tintail's Madara in half with uh, the Lava Ross and Shuriken. Kaguya as well, he, he chops Kaguya in half. With Kaguya, you know, like, she's she's a little bit surprised, but Madara is, like, freaking out. Uh, after that, what what are, like, Hashirama and base Madara supposed to do against these two? Like, what is, like, like War Arc Kakashi supposed to do? What's, like, War Arc Sakura supposed to do? Like, yeah, them all working together might seem really scary, but so would Sasuke turning them all into Chibaku Tensei, yeah. like all at the same time, and then like dropping them onto anybody who's left standing, you know? One last point for the Might Guy thing, because that's just, that's gonna be the main thing in the comments, right? Might Guy died fighting baby Madara alongside the help of numerous Kage level fighters and all their haxes, and still lost. Okay? Let alone Naruto at full six paths and Sasuke working together. Even if you said somehow he kicked Sasuke off guard and murdered him, Naruto's still there, but that's total BS. It's not happening. Obito is literally just bad Madara. Yeah, he's he's even worse than the Madara that Naruto was slapping around. Not only that, but it's also implied that Naruto is heavily above Guy, even via the narrative. Like, the whole point of that confrontation was to show Madara even has a quote where he's like, is this because I'm weakened? No, he's just that strong. Like, it's literally supposed to be this is a new level. This is something else. He kicks away the true seeking orb, something Might Guy could not have done. And then Madara gets so scared of Naruto, he uses the Limbo clone. He never used the Limbo clone against Might Guy or any of the sword. He was laughing the whole time. But versus Naruto, there's like a genuine fear at how strong he was in that encounter. But we can move on to the other characters. So my argument for the other characters in the series is we already know that QB Naruto powered up the entire Shinobi Alliance, but like three times Kakashi Chakra, right? And it's implied that he held off Obito and Madara by himself, like the entire time in KCM2. And he was the only reason any of them survived at all until like the Hokage arrived. And even then it's like, you'd have to prove that like any of those characters can fight a Ten Tails being, which we've all seen them fight Ten Tails Obito. They literally couldn't do anything, like really anything at all. Well, remember when the, the Jubi used its cataclysm and everyone survived specifically because Naruto gave him all their chakra, right? Like Naruto shielded them all by himself, like with just the Nine Tails chakra. Yeah. And then you give him like a six pads amp on top of that, you know, like. <laughs> do you, like, do you see the the insane difference between he and everybody else? Like, like Hashirama was already saying that Naruto was like comparable to him when it was just like KCM two. And we've already seen him fight Hashirama's rival, except on roids. <laughs> like Hashirama's rival on numerous roids. Hashirama's rival 
that almost stalemated him in the past is not only given his sage mode, he's then given the strongest tailed beast, which is stronger than the full nine tails mixed with all the other tailed beasts. He is then given the strongest dojutsu completed on top of that, and then he absorbs Kaguya's very essence and unlocks six paths. And that's who Naruto's fighting, but you want to say Hashirama, who almost stalemated the <laughs> infant version of that, is relevant at all to six paths? These people are crazy. They're crazy. Hashirama's victory against Madara wasn't, like, decisive either, right? Like, it, it was it was implied that it could have gone either way. Like, Hashirama just kind of tricked him at the end. He, he just won by outwitting him because uh, they were both tired. You know, it, it, it was so close, like, down to the wire. Hashirama won with a clone. And uh, then you give Madara all these extra power up, and Naruto's still like, yeah, I don't mind. This is fine. <laughs> Another thing, too, is, like, I've seen this a lot, is, like, a lot of people think, oh, well, Madara only stood a chance because he had the Nine Tails. Well, if you actually watch that fight, it can be implied that Hashirama can absorb its chakra. Like, there's a 50-50 chance he can absorb it for himself, by the way. But it's actually shown that Hashirama is still in Sage mode by the time the Nine Tails is defeated. So Madara in base has to fight Sage mode Hashirama <laughs> to that point. So to say that they're not still relative or something is insane. And then you just give them all of these amps. It's just ridiculous. Like, there's no way in absolute hell that Hashirama is fighting any of them. What about Hashirama and Madara's wood clones? <laughs> like, well, I mean, Naruto's got them covered. I'm pretty sure Naruto could make more clones than any of them. Like, if you look at the Kaguya fight, yeah. Kaguya's dimension is just, like, filled. Like, the ice dimension is, like, like horizon to horizon. It's all Naruto's clones. Yeah. And they're all throwing around gigantic, like, like Biju-amped Rasen shurikens. You know, and I, I'm pretty sure that these Rasen shuriken could take out, like, like dozens of members of the other team at once in this case, right? Like he throws one of them, bam, Sakura, Konohamaru, Pain, Itachi, all dead. Uh, he throws another one, bam, the whole rest of the Akatsuki and two one, Hokage are dead. One Ross and Shuriken for every member of the Akatsuki, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. Dude. Yeah, uh, and he, he, one of his clones could do that too, right? Like he just makes the nine, like, Karama arms and then, you know, just smacks down each of the Akatsuki with one. <laughs> it's also implied as well that, like, Sasuke could just, like, multi-genju to every, like, important person on the enemy team or, like, Chewbacca seal them. If there's any, like, notably strong members or they have the bijou which probably not but it goes in sasuke's favor and me and swag are doing a video on his channel it's going to be naruto sasuke and all the hokage versus the uchiha which people were asking about basically how it comes down to it though is like the more people sasuke is fighting that are weaker than him the more advantage it gives him because he can directly power himself up by absorbing other people whereas like naruto doesn't really do that so, like, if Sasuke's fighting a bunch of Bijou or people as strong as Bijou, like Hashirama or or something insane, and he Chewbacca seals them, he might just rip the chakra out of their body and get only more powerful. He's also immune to every single Genjutsu in the entire Shinobi versus Arsenal. Like, so there's no Kodo Amatsukami, there's no Sukuyomi, there's no Bringer of Darkness. None of it really stops Sasuke. And he can shield them from it as shown when he shielded Naruto from the infinite Sukuyomi, so... Now, please go into Infinite Sukuyami, because if people start debating Kodo Matsukami versus Infinite yeah, oh, Sukuyami... Oh, well, uh, I, I think you guys are uh, downplaying uh, Shisui. Uh, he, he, Kodo Matsukami is dated to be the strongest Genjutsu. Yeah, I, okay, so I, I think anybody who ever said that wasn't considering, like, the Infinite Sukuyomi, <laughs> like, the actual strongest Genjutsu of all time, cast by, like, like the tree that's supposed to be, like, the root of Chakra... Right? Like, that thing opens up and, like, the lotus has, like, the Sharingan eye on it and it reflects it off the moon across the entire planet. But yeah, sure, this, like, Anbu guy, probably better than that. I, I, I don't know, man. Like, I'm pretty sure if Sasuke can protect himself against that. It's literally implied that if Naruto, even in six paths, gets hit by it, he's done. And, like, Sasuke has to straight up block it so it doesn't touch Naruto because he can't save him if it touches him. Like, Kota Matsukami is never stated on, on a planetary scale. It's literally just a very powerful Mengekyo Genjutsu, which Obito kind of outdid with his base Sharingan, you know, but, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, Yagura, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, that aside, it can kind of just be boiled down to Naruto and Sasuke, when they're in their final battles, are fighting people who are going to nuke entire time-space continuums, they're creating moons, you know, they're saving the entire planet, 
Whereas the strongest of the alliance, they're kind of like, holy shit, they chopped down a mountain, you know? And I'm not, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not saying they're mountain level, you know, multi-continental beach, you know, whatever. But uh, the caliber and the narrative implications, it's so stupid, man. On all these Facebook sites or whatever, and I'm not hating on Facebook, you know, I'm just saying like all these weird social media sites, people who don't really scale a whole lot, you know, they think, oh, you know, 8 Gates guy, that's my boy. You see him beat the hell out of Madara, he went, bam, he punched him real hard. He, and Madara can then know what to do at all. You know, and it's like, you don't see something that cool with Naruto. Maybe you don't fanboy as hard, you know, but the scaling just doesn't work for him at all. I've also seen a lot of things like, oh, well, um, you know, Sasuke is uh, the most taxed one, you know, the greatest against taxes, and Naruto's the greatest, you know, physically. And it's like, well, I don't think you guys realize, you know, Sasuke was physically brawling Naruto. So there is no, like, maybe Hashirama to overpower Sasuke because we already know he scales to amped Naruto in QB mode and all this other stuff. And Naruto and Sasuke can also amp each other, majestic attire. We spent most of the video talking about why Naruto would win by himself <laughs> and really only <laughs> to mention Sasuke as an out to Koto Matsukami. His 5,000 clones that might all be like Limbo Madara level. But just literally, he just shoots out like hundreds to thousands of clones that might be Limbo Madara level around the battlefield. And it's like, what do they do? Like the same Madara who in base form could knock out a Bijou in one attack. Like any Bijou, he knocked him out in one attack with one Limbo clone. This might be a little bit contentious. I don't know if this would be considered a uh, hot take. I don't know if you would go quite that far, but I think that if Naruto and Sasuke were to fight each other while all their opponents in this video were also still trying to kill them, I'm pretty sure that the collateral damage from their battle would probably just kill everybody else anyway. Like none of them would be able to hurt them. <laughs> yeah, let's say you fill the whole final valley with all these people. Well, uh, the only person who can actually pursue them is like Onoki and Obito, and I guess also Mu, and they're just gonna get smacked down to the ground, and then Naruto and Sasuke are gonna do their Indra's arrow, <laughs> uh, plus and minus... Black hole attack. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna do their, like, black hole clash attack thing, and that explosion is killing everyone, <laughs> right? Like, none of them are surviving that, okay? Even if you put Naruto and Sasuke, like, even if you make this a, uh, three-way fight where it's Naruto on one team, Sasuke on the other, everyone else from the whole show on the third team pretty sure naruto and sasuke uh it, one of them still ends sasuke up being the victor here sasuke would probably win though if they were all there because yeah. more people for sasuke yeah he'd, absorb, he'd but, like yeah. he'd like absorb the chakra of everybody yeah. uh once they're incapacitated but uh we could talk about one more thing as well there's there's two actually and that is oh well maybe particle style or the tosca blade right those are like two things that people always talk about so like renegon can absorb them uh, end of discussion. Renegon can absorb uh, particle style, we already know that. But the second thing as well is that we already know that the true seeking balls, they're basically amped particle style in the words of heroes and like they actually work on a more fundamental level than the particle style. So the fact that Sasuke can stop them with his Susano chakra arrows and Naruto can kick them around literally means that the particle style isn't like an anti-hax. And the Totsuka blade on the other hand, we don't actually have proof that it can actually like cut everything on a six paths level or seal things on that level. Neither can the Reaper Death Seal. The Reaper Death Seal is implied to have limits as well. So there's literally nothing they can actually do. It's 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 so broken. The Totsuka Blade, um, you could argue the Renegon can't absorb it because Nagato didn't. My counter to that would be that Kabuto forgot about Chibaku Tensei, so he may not have thought to absorb it with the Renegon. But even if you say it like definitively can't, okay, sure. Naruto and Sasuke can fly as high as they want to. And the Totsuka blade, like, yeah, it's it's like long, but is it so long that like if Naruto and Sasuke fly up into like the stratosphere, like they did in their fight in the anime at least, like Itachi is gonna be able to poke them from all the way on the ground, like, like they're 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 in the atmosphere, right? Like you know, no, the NASA don't satellite Itachi, passes man. them. Yeah, the, the like the the, the 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 NASA satellite. You know, they 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 just like they pass one, and Itachi <laughs> just pokes them from all the like way it's down the power there. pole from Dragon Ball just stabs the moon. <laughs> Yeah, another thing too about Itachi versus them, let's be real, Naruto and Sasuke were fighting Madara clones that were on a different plane of existence that Naruto couldn't even see, let alone 
<laughs> Itachi trying to like sneak attack Naruto with the Totsuka Blade or something. Yeah, like... he's not fast enough. Even if you take out the range argument, like you really think Sasuke isn't going to be able to blitz Itachi? Anyways, guys, we don't want to go on for like an hour, but those are just the basic things. I know it's not a super detailed like, where, where are my calcs? I want my you know, like, <laughs> I know it's not super detailed, but I think this is just a fun video that a lot of people just kind of need to see, you know, if you have some friends who are like eight gates guy, you know, would beat up, you know, six paths Naruto or Kaguya, or you think Hashirama would do good against Kaguya, maybe you can share this video to them and just show them like, hey, like, you shouldn't downplay the end of the series. It's kind of broken. Kishimoto kind of went a little bit too hard on the ending. And I think Shonen Jump's a part of that because like Bleach and all that too, doing the same thing. But um, anyways, guys, thank you to uh, Swag Kage for joining the this channel today. Uh, he's got a video of the Uchiha versus the Hokage that a lot of people have been asking on his channel that I'm also part of if you want to check that out. And other than that, guys, see you next time.